Hello, Chris, and welcome to Metal Chaos. Hi, Demetrius. Nice to see you again. How are you? This kind of with a fresh snow, the first snow of the season in Chicago. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, we had a little bit on Halloween, right? Um, on Halloween night, there was uh, there was a little right. bit, and uh, my uh, my my I have two kids. The older one is a little bit uh, this year. It was a little bit too cool for uh, for trick or treating. Uh, but the younger one, uh, we were out uh, trick or treating, and he was more interested in uh, stopping to make snowballs and play with the snow than he was in uh, collecting the candy. So that was uh, <laughs> that was kind of funny. Uh, but uh, they love the snow, uh, my kids. It's it's one of the things they've always enjoyed uh, doing together, uh, playing in the snow, and maybe. Uh, maybe that's partly why I enjoy it so much too. I just find it uh, uh, when the snow is falling, I find it very comforting, very calming. Uh, Honestly, the silence when yes. everything is covered is so addictive. Exactly, exactly. That's one of the things I love the most about it. That's just that that quiet, and it's and it's it it it, it literally does like. It has an acoustic effect. It's like it's like soundproofing for the uh, for the it outside world. It's soundproofing, but at the same time, you can hear stuff because yes. uh, I don't know the the acoustics. Yeah. Because all of that background noise is is diminished, I think, by the snow. And yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I love it. It's one of my one of my favorite things about living where we do. And I think uh, the older I get, the more I appreciate it. Still. I mean, it's easy what to say. When older? Have... What do you mean older? No. Uh, <laughs> I think you know what I mean. <laughs> I may. And of course, it's easy to say when I only have, uh, you know, 20 feet of, of sidewalk that I need to shovel. I mean, that's uh, also <laughs> nice about living in the city is that, uh, you know, the, the roads get taken care of pretty uh, pretty quickly. So, uh, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Bring it on. Oh, my goodness. We started the interview talking about like two old men, but <laughs> well, uh, who cares? Oh, I, another thing I want to mention is that uh, it was very, very cool watching you guys performing with Raven Overkill at the High Roller uh, event. What a highlight that was! What a, what a cool, unexpected thing uh, that was! Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for checking that out. It was very spontaneous too. Uh, Obviously, we were prepared in advance. Uh, we knew we were going to do uh, a little Motorhead set uh, kind of as an encore for the show. But um, the idea for the Gallagher brothers to come on and and uh, and play with us was was pretty spontaneous. Um, you know, in the backstage, I even wrote out a quick, uh, you know, a quick little uh, chart, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you know, here's how it goes. And John Gallagher <laughs> looked at it and he said, you know, the fuck is this? And I was like, you know, just, he's like, I'm just going to go up and make some noise. I was like, well, that's even better. <laughs> that's what we need anyway. So with, with his classic British accent, right? Where some oh, those guys don't understand everything. Uh, I have a pretty good, we've spent a lot of, uh, the band has spent a lot of time in Newcastle. Um, okay. uh, more, more time there than any other place uh, in England. So I think, we have a pretty good, pretty good ear for that particular uh, <laughs> type of accent. But I, I will, I will say that um, touring with the Raven guys was super cool. I mean, they are. We what we expected uh, was that they would be, uh, you know, funny and full of full of humor. Um, you know, that's kind of the the, the stereotype of, of British people, right? Is that they have this this very well formed sense of uh, sense of humor and uh for sure uh these guys did but but what we also um appreciated very much was also how serious they were at the same time about their gig about you know they're there to play a gig they're there to do a job and they want to give their fans the best possible show that they can every single night so even though there are lots of laughs and there's a lot of joking. They're very much, uh, while this is happening, they're changing strings or they're checking the batteries in their, in their gear and everything uh, uh, that you need to do to deliver your best possible show every single night. So it was a really cool experience to be 
out on tour with uh, a band that's uh, a, a little bit older and definitely a lot wiser uh, and and more experienced uh, than us. That, that was that was a, a really cool experience. And to do that, coming back to your uh, what you pointed out about doing the the overkill kind of finale. I mean, that was just uh, you know the the cherry on top of the whole of the whole experience. Just Absolutely. really really cool and satisfying. So allow me to do this pun. Are we safe on the other side? That's for you to decide, I think. Um, the the title um, can be can be understood in a lot of ways, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's easy to think of it as a reference to these past few years that we've had um, in human history uh, with all the difficult things going on. Um, throughout the globe. Um, and for me, it's also a bit more personal um, it related to some things, uh, some struggles, let's say, that, that I was dealing with um, creatively uh, during those years. Um, it was a very, it was a very difficult time for me, I have to say, because I was um, kind of numb uh my creativity was kind of depressed um which was a very very hard thing well at first i tried to fight it i i didn't i didn't realize that this was that this was the case i just uh kind of became frustrated that 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 um it was so hard uh to to create music um during that time and then i realized that yeah i was um maybe not clinically depressed, but definitely creatively depressed, um, musically depressed uh, during that time. And this was a very hard thing to accept uh, that I had never experienced uh, this before, uh, you know, as a songwriter, um, as a producer, you know, I've always been very busy and very productive. Uh, so I think for the pendulum to swing in the other direction, uh, this was something I had had not really experienced before and I kind of had to to deal with that and uh just be patient and wait for uh wait for that tide to return and it didn't come it didn't come rushing back all of a sudden all at once uh in a single wave it came back uh kind of very gradually so it was again it was a matter of being patient uh with myself uh letting things take the time they needed um, and uh, it was not easy, and it was not an easy album to make. Uh, so I think, again, for me, the title has has kind of this personal meaning, uh, but also there's um, plenty of meaning that that uh, uh, an audience, uh, you know, a listener can take um, and apply to some other uh, situation, some other struggle, and hopefully some other feeling of having overcome that, having uh, uh, having persevered. Although the way you describe the, this situation sounds to me like being close to burnt out. And honestly, I would love to know how do you, did you overcome this whole thing? Because, you know, in such situations, we can speak about that after the fact that we have overcome yes. that. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, and and burnout, burnout, it's definitely is definitely part of it. I think I think um, I think there are a lot of examples of things that were already in motion before the pandemic, and then when the pandemic arrived, those things were accelerated or um, became um more intensified right and i think yes i think i was at the point of needing a break uh in some way before the pandemic and then that kind of the pandemic then became a break but it wasn't the break that but that it, i needed it was, it was a forced a break exactly it was something that was that was given to all of us that we had no choice about and no control about. Uh, so again, very hard to accept, but, uh, but 
yeah, I can't, uh, I cannot deny that, uh, that there was some beginning feeling of burnout, maybe going back a couple of years, even, even before that. And that's okay. I mean, the, and I don't want to dwell on this a lot, but the pandemic did this, just like the snow. It decreased the background noise. And now that you had the additional free time, you felt like, hey, now is the time to do this, to do this. But it's not right because you exactly. were not in the right state of mind. Exactly. And it was easy for, for me to um, feel guilty about that. Got because it. there were these stories of people, oh, uh, I I got in shape and lost 50 pounds, <laughs> or I learned four languages, and that's great, that's wonderful. Um, those are very happy stories uh of uh you know, these are these are the stories you want to hear about these kind of um silver linings, uh, I think is the expression, right? You know, in the dark times, there's even these um these possibilities, but that was not my experience. My experience was, as you said, the the, the background noise kind of became more of the foreground noise, and it was not it was not a healthy noise. It was not a productive noise for me. Um, but but man, I, I mean the the result. Although to be honest, when I first started listening to the album, I was a little bit. I got this sadness, underlying sadness. There must, there's something there. There's something. But then as I started, I kept listening, you can see the melodies surfacing up. So there is that sweet balance. And frankly, the album reminded me a little bit of uh, Another Night. I don't know if there was any connection between those. Not, not intentionally. Correct. Um, but what they, have, what they have in common is that... I just wrote the songs that I was in the mood to write. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to put any uh, filters or, um, you know, guidelines on, on my process. I just said, you know what, I'm going to take however much time I need and I'm going to write whatever songs I'm in the mood to write. <clears throat> and I'm going to trust in the process that it will be formed into into a high spirits album um which it was uh clearly and i think i think that um philosophy uh that um method is what uh is what the albums have in common and i think by allowing so much time also you get this kind of natural uh variety uh you have the different types of songs um, and you also have a lot of details uh, kind of packed into those songs. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of things happening that maybe you don't notice the first time you listen or the second time you listen or even the tenth time you listen. Um, and uh, so what you said about you know the album needing a few, it, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah. The album took time to write. It took time to record, and it was it was difficult at times. Um, and I think that may be true um, from the listener's side also. It's not an easy album. Oh, it's, no, no, it's, it's not. It's one that you have to kind of sit with and experience and have some uh, uh, some so, some patience and kind of let it grow uh, a little bit for you. You know, it's something that we used to do, uh, maturing with a band. Even though I cannot say I have been maturing with High Spirits because I'm older than that. But at the same time, you can... If you follow a band from the beginning, you can start getting that relationship, that special relationship. That longer, so, that longer story, yeah. Correct. Um, please don't leave me behind. Is this your first power ballad? <laughs> uh, with with high spirits, yes. Oh uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. And you have a, an awesome riff at the end of that. I will. I wish whenever I listen to that song, I wish that that will have lasted longer, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. That was the first. Part of that song i i had that i had that written and i kind of like attached the song like to the to the front of it there so that's uh that's funny that you say that i had it yeah i was like oh we need to make a song out of this so that's uh that's cool and speaking of first time uh first time things um uh, mm -hmm. cover a cover song oh, i always <laughs> i always from the beginning 
said that High Spirits would never do a cover song, that we would always just... Never say never. Uh, <laughs> well, I did. I, I, you know, I was, I was very, um, I, I, I have a lot of uh, hangups, uh, you could say. Um, I'm very stubborn uh, in this way. And um, yeah, I always said we would never do it. We have enough, we have enough of our own material. I mean, even before, even before we played our first show, we already had 10 complete songs, you know, so we all, we always had enough I mean, this is why bands often do covers at the beginning of their right, of right. their time as a band is because they haven't written um, their originals. We, that that wasn't us. We always had enough material, and I always said, you know, it, there's no need, there's no there's no song out there that would fit. And of course, this was until I heard, uh, and it's a particular version of the Europe song. It's a live version from a small club show, in um, uh, from 1984. Okay. And when I and when I saw it, I was like, I was blown away because it sounded like they were playing a high spirit song, and I was like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna really try not to break my rule uh, with this. But the more I listened to it, and then you know I read the lyrics and kind of learned the guitar parts, and I was like, you know what, I it has to be done. It has to be done. This is just too too perfect of a fit for for what what we're you know what we do um and uh and, and it's still i thought well it'll be we'll record it maybe it won't turn out very good or or maybe it'll be okay and we'll use it for like a b-side or a bonus track something like this but i did like i said i it, it's i couldn't deny it as soon as i heard it i i knew i was <laughs> so i was gonna break the rule I only know the high, um, the the most popular songs from Europe. It's not. Same. Um, Same. So, I, I would, when I was I listened to that for the first time, I thought that's a great high spirit song. But then I figure out uh, it's not. It sounds. <laughs> but for the version that you heard, did they have the keyboards this that high as in the studio version? No. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, because the keyboards are a little off. Right, the, right. Yeah, that's. I only listened to the. I only listened to the studio version once or twice, um, because the the guitar riff was a little easier to hear um, mm -hmm. on that one. But mostly, I referenced the uh, this live version that I mentioned. Good, and, good because uh, I think they. Much more, nah, the keyboard's too high on the mix. <laughs> it's much more balanced uh, in this live version. It's. I mean, it, yeah. When I saw it, it was like. It was like it was like Iron Maiden with Clive Burr the way they the, the way they delivered. I mean, it's like wow. I did not know. Like you, I only know I I've never owned a Europe album. I only know their you know their big hits. Correct. And I had no idea that they could also sound like that. It was like, wow. Sound heavier. <laughs> yeah, just like kicking ass. One of the songs that I think is one of the best of the album, and I can. Put it in the top ton, the top top ten high speed songs. It's one day closer. Mm. And this is the one of also the the examples of the album where you have those very good melodies, mood lifting melodies, but the lyrics, man, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah. So I was <laughs> wondering <laughs> when do the lyrics come into play after you have the full song structure? It it depends. I'm not sure. That's a good question. It really depends on the song. Um, for that, for One Day Closer, I've had the chorus lyrics uh, in my head, in my imagination for five years. I've had that, I've had that one ready for a long time. Um, but then the verses, you know, the other sections of the song, that came more... Um, like as we were as we were producing the album, um, so it, it 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 depends. You know, I often have, uh, you know, I usually have a title. Uh, I usually have a melody, even if it's just do 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 do. You know, I know what the vocal melody will be. Um, I often have I often have a chorus or uh, uh, bits and pieces pretty early. Um, in a song's lifespan, um, but it does it it does vary. That that song in particular, though, that chorus is is uh, is vintage. It's been around a long time. 
So, and, and you said the lyrics come afterwards, right? Or usually, usually, usually because that's sad and <laughs> it's kind of, it can relate in some way during the, the, the pandemic, right? When people were saying, look inside and improve yourselves. But anyways. Yeah. yeah and it's just I, like, you know, like we were talking about, uh, um, we can pretend we're not getting older, <clears throat> mm -hmm. but the truth is we are, and and everyone is, and everything. And I think those are, um, the lyrics in that song are kind of the the maybe the questions on our mind as we're uh, closer to the ends of our lives than we are to the beginning. Um, it's uh, not always fun to think about, uh, uh, to talk about, um, but uh, you can't deny it. As long as you. And I don't know how to do that, but I will say that as long as you enjoy the now, I mean, but it's one of the hardest things. Uh, I haven't Very managed true. to do that, to be honest, but anyhow. <laughs> um, so how long would you say uh, the making of the album take took? Uh, good question. I think, I think I recorded the drums, which is, a, which is the first, you know, the first step in recording, I think we did the drums in July okay. of 22. Oh, two. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it took a long time. And I think the final mixes were done April of April of this year. So July to April, what's that about nine months, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that that's not well, eight hour days and 40 hour weeks. That's, you know, like we were talking about earlier. I, I, I wrote the songs that I was in the mood to write and I worked on the album when I was in the mood to work on the album. I was, I was very, uh, I was intentionally very patient with myself um, and very patient with the music also uh, in this way. So yes, it was, it was a long process and, and not always easy, but um uh, it's definitely the way I will try to do things uh, from now on. Oh, yeah. It takes a lot of uh, artistic maturity to be able to be patient with yourself. Definitely. And that's a hard thing. Uh, that's a hard thing to learn. Um, but uh, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so touring plans. Uh, what about Europe and both Europe and US? Uh, well, that's funny. We kind of done things backwards uh this year we did a, we did all our touring already and then released the album which i think is the reverse of of <laughs> what you what you normally do um yeah we were over in europe uh three times this year did a lot of gigs in a lot of countries um so i think next year um we're taking the first part of the year off um because we have some different things going on with other bands that we're in and some uh uh, some real life stuff uh, that that's going on with uh, people in the band. Uh, so I don't think we're going to be doing after the, of course, we have a hometown show in February, um, which will kind of be an album release show plus a 15 year uh, anniversary show and uh, just something fun to do in the middle of winter. I, I uh, you know, we, you and I can we can build a, uh, some metal snowmen out front of the gig if you want. Absolutely. And, uh, I hope so. I, I'm always open for snow. But uh, uh, after that, then we're going to take some time off, I think, until uh, summer or fall. And uh, to be honest, at that point, I, I don't know. We have a we have an open schedule uh, and an open mind. I would think I would think we want to focus more on the U.S. Uh, uh, on the next um, cycle because we focused so much on Europe. Um, this year, I mean, there are cities, there are cities like New York um, that we haven't played since before the pandemic. So, um, you know, by by next year, it'll have been, I think, five years since we played in New York City, just as an example. Um, right. So there are some places um, where we are overdue. Uh, so I think those will be the priority uh, spots. Mm, excuse me, when we uh, when we do get back to it, but. Uh, but as I said, we have a, we have we have an open mind to uh, where we might want to play next. Uh, so, so right now, we're just focused on that Chicago show and uh, see what comes next. 
I will not ask about the set list, so I hope it will be a long one. Uh, yeah, that's something we got used to um, this year. Actually, we got used to doing a much longer, um, a much longer show than before. I think, I think some shows we did this year were in the uh, seventy-five minute to eighty-minute range, which um, was something I was really nervous about uh, being the singer um, because that's you know I don't have a lot of I don't have any real training um, in that in that regard. I mean, I have my exercises that I do um, on my own and, you know, warm ups before we play, but I don't have any uh, instruction uh, as a, as a vocalist. So that was something I was nervous about, but, uh, but we did it. Um, we did it and it was, uh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty satisfying to get up there and, and be on stage for, for that long and, and uh, keep the audience with us all the way. No one called this cool, but the low humidity and singing, maybe not. <laughs> True. It's much easier in the summer. The hotter the the hotter the better. Because the machine because then the machine is always warm, right? Correct. Correct. So, um speaking of live shows, you have four spring shows with Dawn Bringer. Although yes. the title of the tour, the tour, the, yes, the tour is casting sure. the asses. Sounds grim. It's like the final nail in the coffin or not? Maybe. Oh maybe. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, we haven't put too much thought into what it means or what it is. We just kind of felt that we were in the mood to maybe do a few shows, um, do, uh, especially a few shows in places where we never played, uh, such as the West Coast, uh, such as, such as Texas. And really, uh, truthfully, it was Hell's Heroes. Uh, they've asked us every year. Uh, for a few years now, if we'll if we'll do a show uh, as Dawnbringer, and we almost we almost did it this year, um, but that was not possible because of all the high spirits stuff that we were doing this year. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're doing it next year. I don't know that there will be any more shows after that, but ne like you said, never never say never. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, casting the ashes. So the concept is kind of that uh, you know, Dawnbringer is going to remain dead. It's not you know, it's not coming back to life. It's not a, it's not a reunion. It's just kind of a, um, yeah, like like it says, you know, scattering the ashes. Uh, you know, taking Dawnbringer to some places where it hasn't been. And uh, there will be a there will be a show uh, closer by. Uh, I think that'll be. I think that will be announced pretty soon. Yeah, because you have two days that are unannounced, I think. Yes, the East and the North are yet to be announced. Okay. Uh, then actor, Super Christ. I know you have for, with Super Christ a show in a very challenging venue, I would say very soon. <laughs> <laughs> but for actor, are you planning uh, for an album? Yes, actually, we've just started writing uh, writing those songs now. I've, I've got... Um, I think eight or nine uh, new songs from from UC um, that we're working on now. Um, that's a long process. That's a very long process. Of course, um, it's uh, it's uh, it's less true of, uh, for me nowadays, but it's certainly true for the guys in Finland that they have a lot of other stuff going on uh, musically, and actor kind of fills in the fills in the gaps um, for them. But um, so far, the demos that I've heard are, are super cool and weird. I mean, it's the same kind of like weird. Uh, it's always hard for me because I don't, I pretty much only listen to, to heavy metal, right? So I don't know if there are other bands that sound like actor. And if so, like what those bands are. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's always difficult for me to kind of describe how it sounds, but it's the same kind of weird uh, pop rock with a lot of strange synthesizer sounds. And um, I, I think it's going to be cool. I know it's going to be cool because we always just kind of keep going until it sounds cool. You know, it's just layers and layers and layers and, oh, this needs something else here and this needs something else here. And it, it always ends up being very dense very saturated um so it's a, but it's a long process like i said 
but uh but yes we have a a third album uh, eventually and for super christ we have one show uh in december in chicago yeah that's um, not as super christ but we're playing right all uh, right yes yeah. we thought about it we thought about it but then we decided that 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 wasn't didn't have quite the right feel um so we decided to just call it professor black but it's uh it's this you know it's a three piece band playing all super christ stuff and um I guess similar to the Dawnbringer shows, it's kind of a kind of a one off. Uh, you know, we're in the mood. Let's yeah, have fun. <laughs> Let's have fun. Wait and see. Yeah. You know, because I think. It may be even more so than with Dawnbringer, I think with Super Christ, there are maybe a lot of local fans who were not around <clears throat> uh, to see the band originally. Um, then maybe also some people who now that it's been 10 years actually uh maybe miss hearing those songs a little bit so but again we're not uh you know we're not we're not going i mean i don't want to make it sound like we're just you know goofing off or anything because we're not you know we're we're taking it seriously but we're not we're not overthinking it we're not going to overdo it right um, we were offered the show i was like you know what that actually sounds fun let's do it so that's that's where we're coming from with that any professor black albums Uh, new music, so sorry, not albums. You did that. <laughs> I did that. I might do it again. Um, I have uh, an album which is kind of the kind of the musical uh, companion to Sunrise. Um, I've had it on my hard drive um, for a few years now. It's not quite finished. Some of the songs are finished. Some are not. Um, it's. It's kind of tied to my creative depression period in a way that I don't always enjoy working on it. And I don't know if maybe I should just leave it alone. Um, but it is there, it exists. Uh, so it's possible that that someday it could be finished and released, but, but uh, I don't know. I have to tread carefully. I have well, to tread carefully with that. You know what they say about demons, right? It's better to face them rather to lock them up. <laughs> Maybe, but I also don't want to waste my time if it's going to be something that that I'm never happy with. Um uh because that can be uh I can I can get very angry with myself uh about that too because uh you know, as you know, time is uh time is the most valuable resource that we have. Yes. Um and and to feel that i've that i've wasted uh that i've wasted it uh can be can be difficult last question but i think i always ask about this what about the quathron book <laughs> oh it's coming that's what i was that's what i've been working on this morning uh that's why i was late to the call actually i was trying to finish up uh, a few paragraphs on that um it's uh what can i say it's awesome it's uh right now it's about 700 pages without photos without uh, photos yeah so it's yeah man it's it's intense it's intense it's um i don't know if there's ever been a book about a band uh like on this that's exactly like this um in terms of the amount of detail and the number of people that have been interviewed it's uh it's one of a kind so i think Uh, we definitely announced it too soon. Uh, we announced it thinking it was much uh, much closer than it really was uh, because we didn't know. We didn't know how uh, how much deeper uh, we were going to be able to go on this on this subject. And also, you know, a topic like Bathory is so difficult because you don't. He was so. Right, so secretive, and he concealed so much um, that that it's impossible to know how deep uh, some of those some of those secrets go. And it's nothing scandalous. There's nothing shocking in there. It's not that kind of book, anyway. But but there's a lot to uncover because it was just it simply was not documented already at the time. Uh, the way many bands kind of document themselves, he was doing the opposite. He was, you know, hiding all the evidence um, because he thought it was cool, and because it was part of the appeal. And it definitely is, uh, you know, for a lot of us that 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 mystique. Um, 
And I think the amazing thing is that after you read those 700 pages, um, that mystique is still going to be there. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Battery will always be this enigma uh, um, in, in the world and, you know, in music. Um, you know, even in the face of the, the you know, five or 10 years of research that we've been doing, um, that might be the most amazing thing about it. But, um, but uh, short answer, it's coming. It's okay. coming. So I want to ask when, because it, it will come out whenever it will come out. <laughs> my wish, my wish is that it will come out next year because that would be the 40th anniversary of the Yellow Goat. But uh, but we'll see. Th things need the time they need, um, and there's no point to uh, to rush anything. Uh, so so be ready. I I I I have been for the last I don't know five years now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it. me too. Me too. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for the time. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Album. And see you on the stage. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Have a great rest of your day. You too. And say hi to Maria, okay? I will. I will. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.